What up, potty people? Michelle Gome is in the house. Well, in her house. For this episode of Zach Miller Says. We talk about podcasts, how to get started, what to talk about, and a bunch more. She's one of the best networkers in Houston. And I call her friend. I've been on her show. Now it's my turn to return the favor, Michelle Gomez, the hit podcast host of Networking with Michelle, starts in three, two, one. How now, brown cow? What movie is that from? <laughs> I have no idea. I'm not a movie person. Anchorman? Have you even heard of it? Will Ferrell? <laughs> what are you doing oh with your life, Michelle? <laughs> I'm keeping this in here because the world needs to know that you have never heard that. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with the wonderful and talented but non-movie watching Michelle Gomez. She's never even heard of Anchorman. I mean, look at that. Have you ever laughed this hard on a podcast? I know the answer is no. <laughs> No, not, not as the intro. What are you doing? Come on. Well, the good thing is my laugh is contagious, so I'm sure people will stay. Exactly. <laughs> you got to hook them in the first 17 seconds, and girl, we did it. Yes. <laughs> so, Michelle, it's great to have oh. you on the greatest show in the world, Zach Miller yeah. Says. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be on here. I've been on your show. I'm going to want to be on your show again, you know. Now that okay. we have this amazing like uh, knowledge that you um, are going to share for my audience now, but also knowing that you know nothing about movies, um, <laughs> I just I find that interesting. Like, do you have a favorite movie? <laughs> Coming to America. <laughs> All right, I was not um, expecting that. As cliche as that is, right? Because my parents are from Cameroon, West Africa, mm -hmm. so I think just growing up. <laughs> Were you born in the States? I was born in the States. Okay. I was born in 82. So that movie, you know, it was like perfect timing, right? What'd you call what, Coming to America? Yeah, with um, Eddie Murphy and Arsenio right. Hall. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> and that's pretty, I mean. So what do you do with a lot of your time? You read a lot, produce a lot of content? What's. Produce a lot of content, manage a lot of content. Right for other people, I manage two other podcasts, um, Stemcast with Dr. Reagan Flowers and the Influential Recruiter with Daryl James. So I'm always listening to podcasts. So they record and then send you, and then you edit it. Basically, is that how that process goes down? Yes. So I outsource the editing, uh, but I go over the show notes or I create the show notes, mm -hmm. um, upload it to Lipson and all those other, and create the newsletter. Got it. Let's talk about all that. So podcast, big, big thing right now. Yes. I like to call it the new radio, the better radio. Mm. Um, there are some things that I love about it, things that I hate about it. This show is interesting, I think, and I get in a fight with some of my best friends about it all the time where um, I'm trying to hack the system where I record this way. And actually, I do I do this for my Facebook Lives as well, so it's a very similar process. But I will record a video so that I have both video and audio. Mm -hmm. And then I will pull just the audio for the podcast as well. And then when I'm not super lazy, I will pull out really good clips. Like the opening to this, I will absolutely use. I mean, you have to, right? Or I'll pull out really good clips and use that as ways um, to, to get people to see it, to get excited about it. Um, because as you know, it's hard to get someone to watch a 70 minute video on Facebook, but if you mm -hmm. get them on YouTube, even though they're basically very similar platforms, they'll sit there and watch forever. So let's, let's talk about the whole process of a podcast. You know, obviously it's people listening to people interviewing people usually, or people providing content. Like let's go through the lay of the land. What's everything necessary kind of to, to have, um, let's call it a, like a maximized podcast game. Wow, this is such a great question. I'm the best and interviewer in the world. That's what you <laughs> that's what you should expect. And the thing is, I actually tell people start with where you are. 
right? I was fortunate. I had a MacBook Pro. I had a USB headset. I had audio software I didn't know how to use <laughs> that I couldn't figure out. And of course, I have my cell phone, right? So with the combination of those things, I've been able to launch my podcast, but then I've bought new equipment or products um, along the way. So I don't want I, any- I love that. And I, um, I think most people think most things cost an arm and a leg and their firstborn and their social security number. And honestly, this is all you really need. And most right. people have this, right? Um, there's a, there's a guy who's, um, a, a client of mine and he was like, is it really this easy? I go, yeah, yeah. but that doesn't mean you're going to do it. Most people are lazy and don't, and don't do those things. So I love that you said specifically start with where you are, start with what you have. You probably already have the tools in your arsenal. And even if you don't, you can get them for very, very cheap. So I, I love that. So thank yeah, because I don't want people to get discouraged. And I think lots of times they don't know. So they're already discouraged. So with anything, start with where you are and then grow from there. And then so I, I think the biggest thing is, you know, what do you want to talk about? Right. On your show, what do you want to talk about? Everyone has a personal brand. What are you known for? What's your reputation like, which is your personal brand? So what do you want to uh, what do you want to discuss? As I like to say, what is your core message? And that's before you create any platform, whether it's the podcast, the blog, or if you want to do videos, what is your core message? What message do you want to push out to the world? And hit play, start talking. <laughs> it depends. You hit want a record. social show? <laughs> yeah, hit record. Yeah, you want a solo it. show? Uh, when I started, uh, I did a few solo episodes, right? Just to be like, hey, my name is Michelle. And I was so nervous, I could barely even say my name. Right. It was very how, sad. How, what year was that? 2015. I started my show, Networking with Michelle. Right. But I did a few um, solo episodes just to get comfortable. And then I did my first interview and that was, that was kind of rough. <laughs> and then, um, I just kept on, you know, I use Calendly to schedule my interviews. I want to encourage anyone to get a calendar scheduler tool. I don't know what to call them. Um, I have Calendly. I've seen others. But you want to eliminate the back and forth of emails, right? So you want to send one email, hey, this is my show, you know, do you want to be on it? Here's the link, schedule it. Yeah, I love that. I think uh, it's what I use. Um, that's how you schedule this. It's super easy to go even deeper to explain it. It's calendar. So it's like a calendar or Calendly, calendly.com, I believe is the actual link, something like that. But um, we'll put that in the show notes, obviously, and stuff like that. But um, what's great about it is you basically set your hours of when you want to do this thing. So with me, I used to do it, oh, let's do it whenever, you know, Monday through Friday, nine to five. And then I'm like, I got stuff here. I got stuff yep. there. I got, and I'm like, as I'm trying to manipulate and maneuver through my schedule more, I realized that I don't have a lot of time to be doing that in a bunch of different places and it doesn't make me super efficient. So I try to do them every Thursday. And we're recording this, I believe on a Thursday. I don't even know. I think it's Thursday, but that is so that I know that Thursdays are that day, right? When I do coaching with clients, I do them on specific days and that's all intentional so that this day does this, this day does this, this day does that so that it's that routine that you have to do. And so with a podcast though, what's interesting or any type of content, it's really like starting a new habit. You mm -hmm. have to, that habit can be difficult. And so where I think people mess up is they have all these great um, intentions, kind of like a business plan. Oh, this is, everything's going to go great. Well, you still have to do the work. <laughs> Most people don't want to do the work. And so that frequency is, is so important to get that out. And what you realize is episode one for me, episode one for you we both know they suck compared to where we yeah. are now, right? Uh, this is this is going to be you know somewhere between two hundred and sixty and two hundred and eighty on on this show, 
right? This episode being recorded. If you look at my first episode, uh, no, it is G A R B A G E, garbage, right? right? That is called life. You just improve, you get more comfortable. It's what happens. And so you have to go on with that mindset, though, realizing that you will get better. I like to re listen to my episodes and everything that I do. What do you? I don't, but I have to. You don't like to do it, but you have to watch them. I have to. I have to listen because that's the only way you're going to get better, uh, to ask better questions. I even bought a book recently called The Interviewer's Handbook, right? Because I want to learn how to become a better interviewer because I want to get bigger and better guests on my show. Maybe I want to go into video. I want to go into TV. Podcasting is opening so many doors right now, but I have to become a better interviewer. So my words of wisdom to you for that, to be a better interviewer starts with being a better listener. And I don't know if that book says that or not, but people, the reason I, and I joke about, you know, saying I'm the best interviewer in the world. I do post that. I do say it. It's a little silly. But the reason it started is because people started saying the same thing over and over again. That's a really good question. Oh, you're really good at this. And I went, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I should start flaunting that. Maybe I should start telling people that. Is it a little silly? Do some people are like, oh, who's this donkey like saying that stuff? But I'm like, well, actually listen to my stuff. And at the end of every interview, people are like, that was really good. Thank you for not being the scripted thing like everyone else. And I'm like, you know, maybe there's something there. And so I've recognized that it really starts with listening, taking, I've already taken a lot of notes with you. That is what will really make a big impact for you. Instead of just saying, oh, ask these seven questions. Right. Listen to what they're saying. Right. I mean, the first thing that you said was start where you are. And we went on a tangent on that for the last 10 minutes. That is what makes people get in into you that um to to just be in the zone and if you don't listen people will think that you don't care they'll you know graze over you and it it can be a huge thing so I, i don't know how good of a listener you are at this point but that is what i would focus on if i were you because you will be able to um get very um become very improved by just listening a lot better let me ask you this when you prepare for an interview, do you listen to other interviews that person has done? Or do you just focus on your questions? Mm. Are you? So you're spinning this on me, making me do all the work. Now I got to answer. <laughs> um, okay, so I try to do, I'm not a super thorough researcher. So I like my show. Obviously, you and I have had conversations in the past. We know a little bit about each other. But usually what I'll do is I'll look at something and ask you about that. So for you, it was a book on your bookshelf. The guy that I did right before this, he uh, his two books are based on baseball titles. And he's got a lot of baseball stuff in his background. So I'm trying to gotcha. um, hook them on something that they're really comfortable with so that I can get them comfortable. So then when I ask them really difficult questions that might be emotional, they feel comfortable with me, even though I'm 1500 miles away from you with you being in Houston and me being in Virginia, right? So you have to build that rapport. If you immediately go into it and be like, hey, how much money did you make this year? People are gonna be like, whoa. Yeah. Right? So it's me understanding a basic knowledge of who they are. So 30 minutes or less of research, right? So that's me going through some of their social stuff, Um, so like, I have a question of you that I saw that you posted recently that I'm going to ask next, but, um, it's basically understanding what they're posting, what they're good at, what kind of who they are type of stuff. Um, but I'll also fact check before too. And something that I think is important is even if you know, the answer, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't ask it. Okay. Okay. So what is the title of your book? What is the title of your podcast, right? I know I know that answer for you, but my viewers don't. Right. So it's the dummy's guide to other stuff. And if you you have to you have to think, okay, just because I'm knowledgeable in this and I've done the research and I know it doesn't mean that the people who I'm listening who are listening do. 
So you have to you have to do that. So my question for you is: I saw that you were, uh, I guess this year you were trying to do a hundred. You were trying to get your content posted in a hundred different places or something like that. Yeah. So I'm shooting for a hundred media placements. Okay. And how do you define a media placement? Podcast interviews, uh, guest blogs. You want other stuff, not you hosting other people, correct? Correct. Okay. As well as just guest features, right? It could be as simple as a quote, um, which I've been doing a lot of through Haro, Help a Reporter Out. Or it can be, you know, a 60-minute interview podcast. I prefer podcast interviews. I'm not really trying to go to radio stations and news stations. Um, but that's pretty much it. And I'm currently at 40. And so I have a ways to go. 41. One, We're at 41 40. with this one. The funny thing is, I didn't establish this goal until March 27th. So technically, was that nine months? So. <laughs> Hold on. April, May, <laughs> June, July, five months. So you're right, right, right on track for that. Why? Why is that? Why 100? Like, how is that going to help you? I think it's about momentum, right? It's momentum in different factors from the media standpoint, the expertise standpoint, when I'm shooting or pitching myself to get speaking gigs and other opportunities. When you Google me, there's just a slew of stuff that comes up, right? And I think it builds the credibility that people like, okay, I see what her message is about and she's well-versed, right? She's done an interview before, so she could possibly handle this interview or she can handle this role. And so overall, it just builds momentum and credibility. Got it. Like it. Did we finish everything that you need on podcast? So you got... Um... Start where you are, figure out what you want to talk about, you know, that, that core message. What else would be in there? Uh, well, we start getting to the personal branding um, steps that I discuss. But when it comes to podcasting or any cre um, content creation, I think we discussed that creating a schedule, making sure that you're efficient um, at being consistent, really being consistent with that. Um, overall, if you can learn how to edit, do that. If not, outsource the editing. And yeah, I think that's about it. And editing is really, I think it's fairly easy. Most of these mm -hmm. things are not insane edits. You know, if you're just doing audio, it should be quick and easy, cut and copies in and out post. Um, it should be fairly easy for people. Yes, I have, you know, a broadcast background, but it's it should be pretty easy. I mean, I think you. The funny thing is I've actually gotten better. And I think the reason why I've been able to learn editing now is because I don't have that pressure. Like before I was trying to learn the editing so I can release the podcast and it was holding me up. And now I've been playing around with it casually. So if I do a solo show, I usually edit it. But if it's a interview or something, I'll send that to my guy. If someone was to introduce you to someone saying that I think Michelle can help you, how would you answer that? Or how, what would you want them to say about you? I would want them to say Michelle is known for her podcast, networking with Michelle, and as a personal brand strategist. So let's talk about the personal brand side of that. I believe that we're definitely in a personal branding world right now, probably more than ever. The internet obviously is a big piece of that. You own your own website, your name's website. I think that's a huge piece of it. What are some things that are involved with personal brands? And a lot of people think, and I actually asked the guy who I was interviewing before this, um, a lot of people think that if you're promoting yourself, you're super cocky. How do you get around that? And like, what is, what's involved in a personal brand? What's involved in a personal brand? Uh, so I have my seven steps that I promote. The first one is establish a core message, create a platform. Three is get social, uh, get, get social with social media. Uh, so basically you want to create a story, share that on social media. Four, create an emotional impact. Uh, you want to 
include that emotional impact in your stories, right? You want to be relatable and authentic to people. Uh, number five, it's the three parts of influence, the triad of influence. Six, it's connections, collaborations, and credibility. And seven is show me the money, all right? So I think those seven show steps- Show me the money! <laughs> allows you to have, allows you to create and develop and maintain the, the continuous motion of having a personal brand. It's not something that you can stop because your personal brand is just your reputation. And then if you want to charge, right, if you want to monetize your personal brand, that's why it's last, it's number seven. And lots of times people think, well, I don't have a business. It's not, a, it's not always about business, but if what is the value that you're putting in the workplace in order for you to negotiate a higher salary? So, so I want people to be open-minded when it comes to the show me the money part. And then one of the ways I've been able to get around, I guess, the self-promotion is one, people have a short attention span. And two, that's why I like jumping on other people's platforms, right? Because while I'm promoting you, I'm also promoting myself. And you, I'm only jumping on, I'm only doing interviews if I feel like there's synergy there, right? So I know my audience likes business. So we have right? synergy, you and I? Like... <laughs> we have synergy, oh, right? So my, my audience likes business. Um, so they're going to be inclined to listen to this episode because they know it's going to be centered around business, marketing, things of that nature. And then from there, you're probably, you're going to be able to gain a new listener, right? Who can be a new fan and maybe um, a new customer. So it's, it's just an ongoing thing that builds, builds, builds. It doesn't stop. At least for me, it does not stop. I believe that the money aspect, it, people freak out about that. And for a lot of different reasons, but I love that you call it show me the money too. I think that's classic, <laughs> but um, people are afraid of money. And what I tell people is if you're going to play this content game and you want money to be there, um, understand how you're going to make money. First of all, right. Is it going to be in some sort of ad piece? Is it going to be through coaching? Is it going to be through books? Is it going to be through sponsors or a million other different things? Right. But a lot of times people want it to be through this thing called a community or awareness or a lot of people that might be viewers, uh, their, their audience. And what I tell them is you can make a lot of money if you have an influential and large community or audience. If you don't have that, you're not going to. Right. And so as I'm talking with my publisher, Morgan James Publishing, they're explaining all these things that they're like, Hey, when we're selling your book, we need to tell the bookstores and whoever else is is um, buying the book to then resell it that you can sell books, that you have this community. And if you don't have that community, yet you want to do all these things, you really mm -hmm. have to kind of brainwash your brain back to say, hey, actually, I need to build some sort of credibility from people and a following and an audience because otherwise this other stuff isn't going to be happening. Right. And right. so that is, that's so impactful. So, so how do you personally, how have you built the, the Michelle army, the Michelle tribe, the Michelle, you know, following your audience? So my first book was called Network, Navigate and Nurture. A lot of people here in Houston, they started knowing me for networking or just showing up at networking events, the leadership roles. So it was easy for me to write that book. And now I'm at a point of what I call the triad of influence. And in that you have relationships, audience, and community. And my relationships are my go-to, pretty much my friends, right? My go-to people, I can, I'm checking you and me, right? Sending LinkedIn messages back and forth. Um, hey, can you support me with this and vice versa? Those are your relationships. Your audience would be actually your listeners, right? It's a new audience to me. I'm new, to, um, they're new to me and vice versa. And that's why I try to collaborate as much as possible. But my community, those are the people that pretty much follow me with anything and everything that I do, 
whether it's social media platforms, they're listening to my show, they're listening to my interviews, they're buying my books, my products, my services. Um, they're, it's get, I'm blessed. I'm very humbled at this point because it's getting to the point where I'm starting to see my community at different speaking engagements, right? So I'm able to bring an audience now. Um, but I've nurtured them for so many years with valuable content through my podcast, through social media posts, uh, one-on-one conversations, just making myself available and just sending a, a Facebook message. Hey, how are you doing? You crossed my mind. <laughs> you know, it, cause I'm still in a position where I can do that. And that's how I've been able to nurture and grow my community over the past several years. You probably will always be in a position to do that. And the <laughs> second you get out of it is when all those relationships die. Right. I tell people all the time, like I'm big on relationships. I'm, I'm trying to start this thing called the just say, Hey movement, where you just literally <laughs> say, Hey to everyone. Yeah. Um, not everyone's going to be cordial and say hello back, but if you're kind and you do nice things for other people and you just say, Hey, good things will happen. And I'm not, I don't mean like to text you, call you, message you every single day, but you know, every few months, right. Just say, Hey, right. You stay, in, you stay in someone's mind. It works wonders. It, it works amazing wonders. Like that, when people are like, so what am I going to get out of reading your book? I'm like, uh, you know, how to position yourself and how to build really good relationships with people. That's how you become the anomaly because no one else wants to yeah. to work. Yeah. Networking event 101. So you're like the networking queen. Like, <laughs> what is your go-to icebreaker question? What brings you here today? Mm, that's okay. What do people what do people usually respond to that? Uh, they say usually it's a friend, they saw it online, right? So that's usually my icebreaker and then I ask them uh, what are you most excited about right now? That's a good one. I like that one better. My yeah. go to, my go to right now at least is what are you watching on Netflix? <laughs> right? So here's the reason why most people there don't want to talk about their business. Uh, you have to stand out and be different. You have to be the anomaly. You have to do things that look different. Most people are going to come in and say, hi, what do you do? Right. And to me, that's a really poor question. And if we can be trying to build real personal relationships with people on things I mean, people binge Netflix, right? With you, you don't have Netflix right now. You have Hulu and Stars and something else that I can't remember. But like having those conversations and talking to that person about that, that can be this huge start to, you know, relationship one-on-one where you're like, oh, well, I, I just watched The Office on, on Netflix. Oh, really? I really? That's like my second favorite show of all time. Then you connect there and it's like, it's a refreshing conversation. Instead of being like, oh, well, buy my thing. Of course you want that person to buy your thing at some point, but they're never going to buy from you if you don't have that relationship started in the first place. So I, I think it's super important. How many networking events do you go to a, a week, a month? Uh, right now I'm going to one a week. So at least one networking event and then one, one dinner happy hour, like more one-on-one -on -one encounter. What are you looking for when you're networking? Honestly, I'm at a point where I'm more so on relationship maintenance, right? So just kind of showing face, you know, I'm not saying I'm not meeting anyone new, but showing face, I'm here, <laughs> I'm present, I'm working, um, because it's never the problem with my core group of friends, but it's, it's like that second tier of people you know, familiar face, but you really don't know them that well. And um, so that's why I do one networking event. And then the one a dinner, that's more of the one-on-one -on -one connecting, going deeper, um, which is great because three months is a lot of time. So people are changing jobs, uh, businesses are changing. So the touch base with people on a regular basis really works out. I like it. I like it a lot. What's something that we haven't talked about yet that you like to talk about? <laughs> it's clearly not movies. Oh, man. 
something I would say for women in business, uh, women in business are doing a phenomenal job. And there are a lot of women, excuse me, there are a lot of men that support women in business. So just really want to encourage a lot of women that are listening to the show to keep pushing, uh, find those people, find those gentlemen that you can partner with um, and continue to make strides. And then definitely encourage the men to support the women in business, right? And it's it's a beautiful thing right now. How So I, I'm, I'm married, you know, I have a mom, <laughs> a stepmom, uh, one, two sisters, uh, a lot of women in my life is what I'm getting at. A bunch of nieces. You know, it's an encouraging time um, to see that these transitions, and I don't know if that's the right word. It's, it's, it's probably too negative a word, but it's like the empowerment of women is is, is becoming very strong. And it's, it's great to see. One business that I think is doing, and I'm, I'm a fanboy of this business, but... One business that I think is doing a phenomenal job of women and giving them um, the microphone, the platform is is WWE, World Wrestling Entertainment, where um, it's entertainment, sure, but they are literally, they are now women who before were basically just managers. And now they're giving women the main events in a lot of these, um, uh, in, in their platform. Before... Like at their WrestleMania, women might get five minutes. Now they're giving them, you know, 30-minute matches. And they've done a really good job of really showing people that women can do whatever um, they want. I don't know why in the past the world thought that women couldn't do things. I, 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 It's just stupid, right? But it's great to see that these platforms, that people are being leaders. Stephanie McMahon is one of the big... Um, powers behind that, uh, pushing that. So what, like, where is the world with women though? Like why, why has it taken so long for some of this stuff to happen? You know, that's, I feel like that's hard for me to answer because I'm only 35 years old. And, but I feel like I've, as I've grown, I've seen the progress, but I don't have nothing to compare it to, if that makes sense. Um, Cause it's like, I, I see it and I know it, but wasn't fully adulting there for it to apply to me, if that makes sense, right? Um, but I think a lot of it really is social media. So you're able to see these images circulate online. And from that, that's a whole force of support versus waiting for a specific TV show, um, uh, an interview with Barbara Walters or Diane Sawyer or Oprah, you know, now it's just online. It's, you know, turning the video on and then it can go viral and you don't have to wait for this major ABC special. Right. Well, I think it's, it's, <laughs> it's not just women. It's, 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 it's people in general are now empowering themselves and saying, I'm not waiting. I'm going to take control of my life. Something that maybe in the past they didn't do. And I think that that's something that so many more people are doing. Still not everyone. Right. But a lot more people are like, you know what? I can control this. And it's great that they anyone believes that they can do that. You know, I'm a, a huge believer that whatever you want to do in life, just put your mind to it and you'll do it. I'm the kid who everyone thought would do nothing in life. Look at me now. I'm interviewing oh. you and this is amazing. <laughs> but isn't that Yeah, I mean, it's great. It's just it's it's great. And then it's okay to say I can I can do it all. I can balance it all. I can work, I can go to school, I can have my personal brand, I can have children. Um, I can be in a healthy relationship, like all of it's possible. Yeah, totally love it. What's next for you? Next, uh, I got some things up my sleeve. Um, I think. Let's get that now, exclusive. Come on, come on, <laughs> bring it out. Come on, come on. This is an exclusive. This is an exclusive. Um, I love marketing. I've been a marketer. I've, I've dabbled with several organizations, um, but as of right now, when you go online, there is not 
uh, an African American marketing association, and I am spearheading that right now. So interesting. So, so I, I like to ask, um, I don't know if it's pressing questions, but things like that. Yeah. When you have groups that then silo themselves mm-hmm. to say just that, does that? Mm-hmm. How do you then? make sure that that silo that you're creating or that new group that you're creating also gets intertwined into all the other organizations that you want. Because oftentimes it's, we want to make sure that people are being heard, being seen, getting the opportunities. Right. And a lot of the, the data points are ridiculously low uh, around um, stuff like this and where um, like government jobs aren't being occupied by anyone other than white males, basically. I mean, it's just, Mm-hmm. crazy things so how do you make sure that this silo that you create and, and i don't know if silo is the right word but this this new platform that you create does intertwine into the other places so that you do get those numbers up basically i i think for me and not to to my own horn but i i definitely have the spirit of collaboration right so it's not it's not part and parcel it's it's kind of like and both right so i think as as amongst black professionals uh, that are in the marketing industry. Like, where are we going to get that education, that resource, Um, as well as entrepreneurs, right? A lot of small business owners struggle with that. And then as far as the big brands, we all know that multicultural marketing is hot right now, but there's very few brands that are doing it well. And there tends to be a gap when it comes to messaging right? Advertising, marketing, all that type of stuff. So I just want to create a space where whether you're black, white, Hispanic, pink, purple, green, if you want to immerse yourself into multicultural marketing, this would be a go-to organization for you to learn, get qualified people, um, or some some type of way we can partnership. Um, And so I'm just trying to iron all of that out in order for me to create a thriving organization going into 2019. So one thing to kind of piggyback on that, that I think is important as, um, so when I um, finished my book, um, Anomaly, how to finally stand out from the crowd, you know, got to do a little plug in there. Um, I gave it to a bunch of different demographics because I mm-hmm. wanted to see what people thought about it. And there was a, a young lady named uh, Lavinia and um, she's probably, I don't know, 20, late 20 year old, um, black business owner. And she, there was a line in the book where she goes, she literally called me and she goes, you can't say that. People, mm-hmm. you are a white male. And basically I used the word glass ceiling. And I felt like I was at this glass ceiling where um, when I worked in TV news that it didn't matter where I was, I was never going to be able to get up higher. And she was like, you, you don't get it the same way that other people do, right? Mm-hmm. Women, um, minorities, et cetera, have a different type of glass ceiling. And I was, I was really encouraged that she would teach me that. So I took it out of the book basically, but it really? was, well, I took that word out. I used it in a different way. Cause I didn't want to offend people in that kind of, way. it wasn't, it, it wasn't meant to be offensive in that way. It was basically right. just saying, Hey, I'm here. But if I don't reach out to her and say, Hey, can you read this? And I didn't, re- I, I wasn't telling her, hey, as a you know a 26 yeah. year old black woman, how please tell me what I'm saying wrong. She right. just gave me this new wisdom that I didn't know about, and then I told my wife that, and she was like, "Yeah, you definitely can't say that, you donkey." And I was like, "Oh, okay, like what? I'm like, yeah, thanks." But I'm really surprised. Why? What? What? What are you surprised at? Because the glass ceiling is there, right? Um, and of course, I mean, there's the battle of being culturally culturally sensitive as well as white privilege but regardless the glass ceiling is there people are still going to hit it you know you may hit it you may just have one hurdle to get over whereas i might have four or five hurdles to get over but the glass ceiling is still, still there regardless that's the way i look at yeah. it in my- i i still use the same and i can't remember what i changed it to um mm-hmm. but i think i just described it more than just saying glass ceiling um because, look, I, I'm a firm believer that I'm not going to please everyone, but I did not want to have any type of derogatory term in there. Not that that's a derogatory term, but 
I didn't want to offend someone. The book is definitely not meant to offend someone. Um, so there was no reason for me to potentially get a bunch of Twitter rants going on about me basically because of that. So, um, but yeah, if you want to know more things, if you want people to give you their thoughts, you have to be open to letting them give you those thoughts. And I think oftentimes when we talk about um, different demographics of, you know, gender, sex, race, whatever, you're going to get different appetites in there. And you have to, if, if you really want it, you have to be welcoming that information. Not everyone wants it. So, all right. What else? What else we got? That's it. That's it. That's the biggest thing um, right now where my focus and energy, <laughs> and I think that's enough. <laughs> Love it. People can check you out at Networking with Michelle, the greatest podcast in the world. Well, the second. After, after yours. Second. <laughs> No, I've been on her show. Uh, she's got over 150 episodes. I asked her earlier what episode it was, and it was doesn't matter if it wasn't number one in the numbers. It was number one overall because it was amazing. Um, so you guys should check her out. Check out all the show notes to get links and everything, and uh, also check out the soon-to-be African American Marketing Association. Yes, yes. So AAMA? Yes. Yes. Not to be uh, thought of as AARP. So, jokes. Hey, we'll collaborate with them too. <laughs> hey, exactly. Love it. Thank you for being here. This was super fun. Uh, definitely check out Michelle and everything that she's doing. Content is king, obviously, and she really can break it down and show you how to do that. And I'm happy to be number 41 of your media uh, pieces. Let's get you to 100. And um, sweet. We'll see you soon. Peace. Hey everyone, thanks so much for listening to this entire episode of Zach Miller Says. It was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions or guests that you want to ask me or see me on the show, hit me up. You can just do it in the comments. Or email me, Z-A-C-K. That's me at startwithhatch.com. So Zach this is the ACK at S T A R T W I T H H A T C H dot com. Now, my good friend Eric Olson is encouraging me to do these out cues, right? Usually, when you're listening to these, the show just kind of ends abruptly. Why? Because it's weird and that's what anomalies do. But he really thinks that I should be upselling this bad boy, my brand new book, Anomaly How to Finally Stand Out from the Crowd. Now, officially, the book comes out April 2nd of 2019. However, I've advanced copies. And if you want one of these bad boys, you can go to ZachMillerSays.com slash anomaly. That's A-N-O-M-A-L-Y. Or just check out the link in the show notes and you can get your advanced copy of the greatest book ever written, produced, and whatever other exciting word to describe it could be. I really appreciate you guys continuing to listen to the show, though. Uh, it means a lot to me. We've done hundreds of episodes. I really want to tell the stories of people, um, be very transparent in my solo episodes, my long-form interviews with people, trying to get stories that most people have not been able to get out of them. I think that's something that's super powerful and really provides great content. I love the stories that I'm telling of, of the people that I interview. And then I also, you know, with these solo episodes, just really try to talk through and document what I'm currently going through. And so I appreciate you guys listening. Hey, and also one last thing after you grab the book, like cheesy plug for the book here, ah, after you get the book, Make sure you subscribe to the show, and if you have a friend or following that you think would also enjoy the episode, share it with them as well, because the more people that consume this, the more lives that we together can change. Ooh, look at that. Grab a book. Thank you all. Peace.